This video is going to explore the impact that the process of combustion has on the natural carbon cycle. Now combustion is a natural process, but if you compare it to humans doing combustion, we do it a lot more than anything in nature. Right now, as you watch this video, combustion is happening to power these lights, to power my computer, to power like my phone next to me, maybe not exactly right now, but point being, humans use combustion a lot more. So it's important to understand how humans, through the process of combustion, impact our carbon cycle. So let's just talk about combustion in general. So in order for combustion to happen, and you know, I feel like I'm using this fancy word when I'm talking about combustion. Combustion is fire, more or less. So to make a fire, you need a heat source. Now this is showing hot temperature, which some things can just use hot temperature, but this, when you think of fire, you typically have some sort of flame first, right? Uh, so that can be from a match, it can be from a spark, etc. You need a fuel, so here I'm showing wood, um, but that fuel can really be anything. Typically, it's going to have carbon bonds in it uh, because when you break apart carbon bonds, they release a lot of heat and a lot of energy. And then it needs to be done in the presence of oxygen. Now, it doesn't need to be pure oxygen. If you make a bonfire, you know, the air that you're breathing right now has oxygen in it, but you are not breathing pure oxygen. Uh, so there just needs to be some oxygen around. So when these three things happen, you create your fire, right? You, you, you create kind of what your goal was, but you're going to create different byproducts. And because we're focusing on the carbon cycle, I'm just going to focus on one product, uh, which is CO2 or carbon dioxide. Now, this should make sense, right? You burn something that has carbon. Again, most fuels that we're going to burn have carbon in them. Coal, oil, natural gas, wood, right? Wood is a living or, or was a living organism, a carbon based organism. So it makes sense if you have carbon and you have oxygen and you have energy, it's going to reform those bonds and a byproduct is carbon dioxide. There's other byproducts as well. And again, one of the things you also get is fire. So I don't want you thinking, wow, we just converted all that wood into carbon dioxide. That is not what I'm saying, but it is a byproduct. That's fact of life, right? There, there's no scientists that are arguing over this. So you burn a fuel with carbon in it, you're going to make carbon dioxide. Okay, let's go back to our carbon cycle. And so here is what that original carbon cycle looks like. I talked about this in an earlier video. You know, there's different processes such as photosynthesis and cellular respiration that exchange carbon with the atmosphere and with organisms. You know, our atmosphere and oceans have different pathways. As organisms die and don't decompose, they become fossil fuels. So in general, on Earth, carbon moves around. But what we're interested in when we're talking about the human impact to the carbon cycle is we're taking a look at these fossil fuels. Again, fossil fuels were made naturally. They're made from the organisms that lived on Earth and in our oceans hundreds of millions of years ago. They die, they don't decompose, and so now you get all this carbon that's been compacted, 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 there's a lot of heat, a lot of time, and now this carbon's kind of stuck, like as a fossil fuel. There are ways that fossil fuels naturally re-enter the active carbon cycle, but few and far between. What's happening is that humans are extracting these fossil fuels a whole lot faster than how they naturally kind of seep back into the active carbon cycle. And we burn them. And when we burn them, we're releasing the carbon that was stored in fossil fuels that were probably going to be stored there for a very long period of time. And we are burning it and releasing carbon dioxide. And so carbon dioxide is entering the atmosphere. And we essentially are churning, well, really a pathway that barely existed. 
and we're making it like a brand new arrow, like in this carbon cycle. And so we're taking something that was stored for a very, very long time, we're adding it to the atmosphere. There's a lot of impacts for it being in the atmosphere. Fortunately, because of this equilibrium between atmosphere and oceans, even though we are pumping a lot of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere, it's not as bad as it could be. It's still kind of bad. I got future videos about that, but it could be worse. Uh, but our oceans are actually taking in a lot of that carbon dioxide. That in and of itself has its own set of problems, but point being, uh, we're adding more to our atmosphere. And, and this really is just kind of a human cycle. The, the natural ways that fossil fuels kind of enter the atmosphere or re-enter really the biosphere is so small, infinitesimally small compared to humans reintroducing it. Um, so if we talk about, you know, burning fossil fuels, reintroducing carbon in the atmosphere, it is important to kind of uh, be fair, so to speak, uh, to our fossil fuels. So I know I just threw up this graph on here. Let's, let's break down this graph first. So here on our X axis, we have natural gas, petroleum, and coal. And the authors of this graph wanted to, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they wanted to do, but instead of using bars, they're using like fire as a way to demonstrate their data. But you can think of these different fires as bars, like this is a bar graph. On the Y axis, it says carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. And it's, sorry, it's pounds of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour is an unit of energy. And when we say energy in this context, I mean, you're buying it from your electrical company. You get charged for how many kilowatt hours you use. So this is saying, hey, you are using a kilowatt hour of electricity. Here's how much carbon dioxide is being released based on these different types of fuel. So if we take a look at this graph, the smallest bar is natural gas. So if you are using a kilowatt of electricity in your home and it's all powered by natural gas, you're going to release 0 0.8 pounds of carbon dioxide. I know this is kind of hard to visualize. You're like, what is 0 0.8 pounds? So a pound of carbon dioxide is, if you think about those round exercise balls, like that's a pound of carbon dioxide. So you're essentially releasing an exercise ball worth of carbon dioxide if you're using natural gas. If you're using oil or petroleum, it's 1.4. And if you're using coal for that electricity, it's 2.1. So you can see coal is over double the amount of carbon dioxide emissions as natural gas, even though it's the same energy output. It's still making a kilowatt hour of electricity. And then oil is somewhere in between. Now, you might be wondering, well, why is there that difference? And what you may have noticed is I I added the chemical formulas of these different fossil fuels. And this is coming from the fossil fuels lecture. So if you haven't seen that, you can go watch that where I talk about these structures more. But the biggest thing is, as I mentioned before, when you burn a fuel with carbon, you have to burn it in the presence of oxygen and one of your outputs will be carbon dioxide, period. End of story. But how much carbon dioxide depends on how much carbon was in that fuel. Natural gas only has a single carbon. Coal has hundreds of carbons and oil is somewhere in between, kind of on the lower end, but still somewhere in between. So it actually, it makes sense. If I burn a fuel with less carbon in it, then I'm going to create less carbon dioxide, right? There's less CO2 to create because there's less C, right? There's less carbon to do it with. If I have more carbon, I'm going to create more carbon dioxide. Now, all three of these fuels are releasing carbon dioxide, and that is a problem. But there, you can always choose the lesser of all evils, right? If you move towards more natural gas, you are reducing the amount of carbon dioxide. Our society is not ready for 100% renewable energy. Like, I guess mentally we are, but our 
power grid is not equipped for it. The resources needed for that we don't have. Uh, we, ha we have a long way to go. So at least in the meantime, we can be reducing our coal power in favor for oil or even or really for natural gas, and that is going to make an impact. Now here in the United States, um, here is where our electricity comes from. And this data is from 2023. And if you look in the uh, kind of video description, I have a link where this data came from. So if you're watching this video, but we're in the future, uh, you can kind of see where we stand now. So in 2018, I first made this graph and I first used data um, and it was actually data from 2016. So just doing some math uh, from seven years, <laughs> seven years ago. And back then, natural gas fueled 34% of our electricity and coal 30%. We'll look at it today. Natural gas is at 43% and coal is at 16%. Now, the total parts of the pie uh, for these non-renewable source of energies, for these fossil fuel energies, you know, is this 43 plus 16, so it's 59, if you want to include this other as one, so it's 60%. Whereas in 2016, it was 64%. So it's unfortunate that the United States hasn't been making a lot more progress towards uh, clean energy but we are getting cleaner, right? Our share of coal that's using to produce electricity in the United States has been greatly declining. And so while these carbon-based fuels are still a good chunk of our electricity source, we're getting cleaner, right? We're reducing the amount of coal we use by a lot, which means when we burn these fossil fuels, when we're burning natural gas, we're releasing a lot less carbon dioxide versus, you know, seven, eight years ago, where we used to use a lot more coal and so a lot more carbon dioxide. So it doesn't feel like this is good news. This is good news. It's better news. We could have even better news, but this isn't bad. We, we should appreciate the strides that have been happening. So with that, again, combustion, for the most part, is kind of a human done thing, and it's going to make an impact to our environment. If you burn things with carbon, you're going to release carbon dioxide. But depending on the material you're burning will impact how much carbon dioxide is being released. Even if you can't go to 100% clean energy, there are different types of carbon-based fuels we can choose to at least lower our impact of carbon dioxide. If you watch some of my future videos, we'll then talk about why carbon dioxide is such a big deal. Because so far, I haven't talked about that at all because it's really important to kind of understand how carbon naturally moves first and how humans kind of toy with that before we can really start exploring the impacts of that increased carbon dioxide in our atmosphere.